All right, let's talk about some masking equipment that you might want and also the type of tape and stuff that I like to use. Um, there's a few of them. Uh, there's uh, in a quick pinch, if you're going to use it and take it off the same day and it's brand new, you can use the cheap uh, 3M white tape with the black label. That stuff has really, really super thin paper on it. And if you keep it for more than a couple days um, in your truck or whatever, it usually gets bad. So you only want to buy what you need if you're going to use that. Um, so usually what I do is I don't normally use that. I spend a little bit more money. But in a pinch, you can use that. It'll work. Um, you can put it on and take it back off the same day and you'll be fine if you want to go low budget. So there's, you know, a few different options here. So again, if you're going to leave anything up any period of time, like if you need to leave it up for a week or a couple days, you really need to use the blue tape. Uh, this stuff here is kind of a happy medium. This is Scotch 3M. Uh, uh, this is kind of a, it's kind of a, I think they call it a two day or one day or something, two day tape. You can leave it up a little longer if it's warm out. If it's really cold out, you might get some residue from it. And again, you know, if you use the cheaper tapes, you're going to get residue if you leave it overnight. And it's always best to mask and remove the same day you paint. A lot of people I've seen, there's nothing worse than if you go in, I mean, yeah, you can leave it overnight. But I've seen people mask a whole house off on a Friday and leave it over the entire weekend while the customer's there and they've got, they can't see out of their windows. You know, that's so disrespectful, guys. If you're doing that, you need to change your game up, you know, start masking and painting the same day. Here's how I normally do it. I'm going to explain this to you in this video as well. We will mask a house. In fact, if I'm doing a commercial building, I'll mask a section, okay? I'll paint that section. I'll do everything in that one section, and then I will remove all my masking the same day and move to the next section. Done. I want to make sure they don't leave, and especially in a commercial building, that you don't have masking stuff up for days and days and days, and customers have to look at it, you know, they have to walk through it, and all that other stuff. It's a hazard for you. It, it's just really a bad idea. It's disrespectful to the tenants. You know, people are paying a lot of money for these commercial buildings, especially. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's really disrespectful to do that. Make sure. Try, and what I always tell people, look, and I was working on a commercial job. I'm going to tell you a little story so you guys can get this stuff. I was working on a commercial job, and I said, listen, we need to mask off this section and get this side painted, okay? And he's like, well, no, let's go ahead and mask everything, and then we'll paint everything, Okay. Guess what happened? The wind kicked up. So all the work we did of all that masking got all ripped back off. So it was completely a, days, a, a day of labor waste. And I already had been checking the weather and I was telling him, look, we got to get this painted because the masking, you know, because there's potential winds today, first of all, and we may lose our masking and we also may, lo may lose being able to paint it. So we did. We lost both. So, it's always a good idea if you're masking, you know, it, what you do is if you have a masking crew, you get your crew started masking, and then right behind them you start painting. And then right behind that you start removing, you know, so that you don't have masking stuff up over a long time, period of time. That's the right way to do it, okay. But some of you guys, I know the guys are using blue tape and they mask everything off and they leave it for two or three days and the customer can't see out of their windows. You know, it's really a security risk for them. It's just not a good idea if you can do it and stay. I mean, yeah, I've had a couple times where we left a couple windows up, but that's no big thing. I'm talking about the whole house, all masked off, all the windows covered days at a time. Disrespectful, guys. Really disrespectful. Think about your customer. Okay, not about you. It's not always about you. It's about your customer. Okay, here's a product I do not use. <laughs> I won't buy it. And it's this stuff here is synthetic paper. Okay, it just... Have you guys ever used this? I mean, you can make comments on it, whatever, and it'll help other guys. I mean, 
this stuff is just so flimsy and terrible. It just, I mean, there might be a time when you might find a way to use it because let's say it gets wet or something like that or, you know, or something. You might find a reason to use it. But it, it, they give me one of these things every year and I, I, I use it just to get rid of it. <laughs> but I don't normally use it. And then you have your 3M hand masker. What this does is this goes on the same machine. And then they have, this one's a four foot section if you don't know about these. I mean, almost everybody does, so I'm su be surprised if you didn't. Um, they have a four foot, they have a six foot, they have a, what is it, 99 inches, I don't know, whatever that is. Um, but they have a, whatever, they have a 99 inch one, I think is the biggest one they make. And they have different brands of this. They have 3M has a, has a red label one, and they have a black label one, and they have this one called Trimaco. This is normally what I use because it's a little cheaper and it's a little bit thicker. So if you can see here, they're Trimaco. Okay. I usually use this because it's a little cheaper and it's a little thicker. Uh, the best stuff there is, is the red 3M. So the red 3M, I don't have any of it right now. Uh, I was looking for it and I was going to go get some roll of regular paper. On the paper issue, I use the cheapest stuff there is. I don't care. I'm not going to leave it up over two or three days. If you're using it, you know, like if you're doing like some sort of a high-end enamel or lacquer, you might want to get the proper paper for that. And then that might come in where you might want to use this stuff because this the paint won't soak through this. So if you're having that issue, you can use some of the synthetic stuff. Um, again, normally I don't use this. But anyway... The best one is the Red 3M, okay? Why is the best one the Red 3M? And it's the most expensive. And I don't normally use it because it doesn't... I've learned how to do a really good job with this one and, you know, not have to use it. The Red 3M, when you apply it and you open it up, it's a little windy right now, so I can't really do that um, out here where I'm at. If I was doing a window, it'd be no problem. And I could just set up a camera and do a window for you. But what I'll do is I'll use the, the red 3M has static electricity built into it. So when you pull it down, it has more static that it makes than these. So what it'll do is it'll hold onto the glass while you're masking it. So you open it up and it'll stick to the glass really good so that you get a little bit of time to put your tape on. Now, I'm way out in the middle of nowhere. I can't go get my camera stand. So... I would show you but I'm just not right now not where I'm at but anyway uh, you, I would go ahead and have that set it could set it on the window and it'll give you a little bit of time so you can use two hands and go ahead and mask off the uh, the around it with your tape so you, your, your top edge generally sometimes the top sometimes you'll do the side because the size of the window but normally we'll do the top of the window with the masking machine go along here and then put this on and then pull it down and then uh, pull it down and then the sides and bottom will mask with tape so um, typically that's how it's done a slider window you probably do from the side you know work over you're gonna do a little bit different on those but on this regular windows you're gonna do the top with the masking machine pull it down and then the static will hold it to the window. So it gives you a little more time. So if it's your first time using one of these type of things here, one of these uh, masking machine with the, uh, with the, with the uh, cut uh, fist queen on it, um, you might want to get the red stuff just so you get used to it. It'll help you learn how to do it a little bit better. The other thing that's good about the red one is the red one, uh, it, it, some products will flake off of it. So, so like you'll have sometimes, I haven't really had that issue with this, but if you paint over it, the, the, you go back to repaint it or whatever, uh, you go to paint it and it flakes back off of the plastic and in certain products, you're going to find that you might want to use the red one for that. So those are the two benefits of the red plastic. So if you, if you wonder why it's more and what's in it, 
the red plastic is better for those situations. Like I said, I've never had this product have a flake paint issue, but they say it does, it can. So anyway, let's get on to tape. So if you're gonna have to put up some masking, you have to leave it inside. So when am I gonna do that? Let's say I'm doing a commercial building, we're doing several coats, um, it's interior, and uh, I have some windows I need to mask and they're gonna be up for a few days, then we'll use blue tape. Um, most of the time I can get away with using this stuff uh, this is kind of the medium happy medium and this is just a little bit more money than the white tape so if you can find this this is a this is the newest uh, grade they have it's scotch premium grade orange okay and what the thing that's nice about this is this is a scotch grade orange I think let me pull it and I'll, I could yeah, it's orange. I could, it's the regular Scotch brand orange. Dun Edwards has an orange too. And it's pretty good. It's another good tape I'll tell, tell you about in a second. But um, the Scotch grade orange is nice because what they do is they put a lacquer on the outside of it. And that makes the tape a little bit thicker. So when you're, you know, like when you're masking with it, it doesn't, uh, it, it rips a little, a little harder. So sometimes the other stuff, the cheap white stuff, it works. You get used to using it. You can do plenty with it if you want to. You can use that. That's a good tape to use for cheap. Okay. Um, but you'll find that it's a little bit tarry. So you go to use it, and sometimes it rips when you don't want it to. This here, you got to give it a good tug to rip it. So it rips only usually when you want it to. Uh, the thing I have had problems with is every once in a while I'll get one of these where it sits in the sun, and if it sits in the sun for any amount of time, uh, it's ruined. Because the, uh, you know, if it sits in the sun for, you know, let's say uh, a week or something like that, um, it'll start to get decrepit, and it won't work the same, and you'll have issues with it. It won't come off the roll nice. You know, those are issues you'll run into with tape. And especially with the white stuff. If you use the white stuff, if it's outside for more than, I'd say, two days, it's done. You just throw it away. It's no good. So the white stuff does not last at all. If So I only, if I'm using the white stuff, I'll just use what I need and I'll throw it out in our, in, at the end of the job or whatever. I just won't, you know, that'll be it. I just buy what I, what I need for that job and that's it. So now they also have a blue tape with an orange inside label and if you get that one uh, that's for light stick so if you're doing graphics on a wall or something like that then that's when you're going to want to use that particular type of type of product um, you will get some tape bleed with it there's tricks to doing that uh, if you're getting tape bleed one of the things you can do is you can tape it off first and then use your existing color that's on the wall now and paint it over the tape where you're, where you're gonna, where your mask area is. So let's say you get a white house, you can just take your brush and just brush the white over, or let's say you're doing white trim, you're doing your tape and your base off. It's the only thing I'll usually tape off on the interior is the base. Uh, we'll, you could spray your doors and yeah i usually what we'll do if we're doing a production interior where there's nothing inside we're going quick we're going to do custom paint but we're going to do in a production method we'll go and spray uh, the walls one coat then we spray the uh doors and frames okay one get, get them all sprayed out two coats or whatever all the doors and frames in in, in the base doors casing base all the trim stuff okay if you got crown or whatever spray it all then go back and we'll do all the ceilings after that and I'll tape off the crown if we're doing crown whatever but we'll go through and do all the ceilings and then with flat and then I always use flat on ceilings I don't use any enamel if somebody wants me to use enamel I tell them no I won't do it sorry that's all I use so I'll use the in, uh, flat on the ceilings and then I will go through and then tape the base, the top of the base off. And so if that's the thing you're doing, and that's typically what guys are doing, you can take 
your wall, your white color that you got on your base, you can use the flat or the enamel, whatever, almost you're not going to be able to see it really. Um, and then paint real quick, go through and paint the top of the tape with the wall, with the base color. Okay, white, say. Paint the top of the tape white. Let that completely dry. Paint your walls, paint into your base, you pull it back off, you got a nice straight edge, no tape bleed. So that's a little trick there if you guys wonder how to do that. Um, there's other ways to do it. You can dry brush your color over the tape, just real, real, real light. You know, if you're in a different circumstance, you don't always have the time to wait for that paint to dry, so you can do that, really dry brush it. A couple of coats so it doesn't bleed underneath the tape. That's another way you can do it. Um, you know, or you can use the frog green tape if you want to do that. I don't normally do that, so um, I do one of those other two methods. So anyway. Those are a couple things about tape. Um, this product here, you can usually get this for just a little bit more than your uh, regular white tape. So it's really not that much more. I was paying at one point, I think about $250 a roll for this. I think it's a little more now, but I'm not sure. I generally always use inch and a half. I don't usually need two inch. And one inch is only for certain circumstances when I just can't get two in, two and a half, uh, one and a half on there. But also if you're somewhere where you can't find this tape and you're near Dunn Edwards Paints, they have their house brand that's orange and it works pretty good. What you'll find with some of the cheaper tapes like Intertape and even the Dunn Edwards one is if you do leave it up any any amount of time, it will leave a tape residue, or the tape residue will stay. And you can kind of tell by feeling the tape. This one has the better stick on it. So it has kind of a, a happy medium between this one, between the white and this blue. So it's kind of a real nice happy medium. It's a little bit, just a little bit more than the other tape and it works the best. So anyway, paper machine. The only thing really is the 3M. Guys, you just gotta pay for these. They're 50 bucks or more. That's how much they were last time I bought one. A lot of times you can find one of these deals at one of the paint stores where they have some of this stuff, the Easy Mask. They'll have the black brand in it, uh, a 3M, a box of it. We can get one of these, you get one of these things here. And I think you get some kind of a tape with it too, I'm not sure. But you get mostly, it's uh, rolls of the 3M stuff and one of these and at one point they were like a hundred bucks to do it that way and it was way cheaper it was cheaper than buying it was like getting the machine for free so they come in a box if you find that kind of search around maybe go on the internet and look for something like that and you'll find out what i'm talking about it's a box with a kit and it has this one and that in it and yeah they're expensive but honestly yeah because a lot of times there's you gotta make sure it has the film blade on it course this has a normally has a guard on here but uh that guard kind of gets in the way we end up tearing them off yeah that's probably another osha violation but uh you know you got to do what you got to do those guards are a pain in the ass so but you'll find with the some of the other masking machines if you get a cheap one uh that you'll find the angle of this isn't very good so i've got one of these ones that i only use for paper um i thought it was going to beat the 3m deal and it was like 25 bucks i forget the brand but the handle is in an odd place it's at the wrong angle so that when you go to tear it you really need a, a heavy angle to tear this stuff uh that's on here and this masker is the only one that really does it so you just got to pay 3m their money that's what you got to do so anyway two inch one and a half inch tape is what i use orange mostly regular paper not this garbage and i use the trimaco product there and i've gotten used to using it but like i said if you're brand new or whatever try the red stuff first and get used to that and then switch over to using this because then you'll see um you'll pay an extra money for that but you'll get the hang of how it, how this stuff works and you'll get better at holding like with your elbow the corner down while you're trying to mask it versus you know you know because you don't have to do that with the red it'll just stay on the window 
which you'll find that to be a nice benefit in some areas, but then you start getting tired of paying for it. So you figure out ways to make the other stuff work. So anyway, that's what I've always done. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. It's kind of a long one, but uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's hope it helps you with your job.